and welcome to part three of U.S. Mixed Fusions workshop on institutional comprehensive internationalization. On behalf of Executive Director Carlos Huerta and myself, we would like to thank you for using our system and we hope you have found it useful and fruitful so far. And what we're going to talk about now in part three will complement what you've already been discussing in parts one and two. We'd like to introduce this book called The Community College in a Global Context. We highly recommend this book and specifically chapter two we're going to talk about today and it's entitled Building Support for Internationalization Through Institutional Assessment and Leadership Engagement. And this slide here talks about institutional internationalization progression. And this was written by Drs. Bonnie Bissonnette and Sean Wooden. And here you can see on the left hand side there are isolated activities, and the names of these activities are down below here, of these elements. Partnerships, student services, co-curricular activities, international development, leadership and policy, curricular activities, and professional development activities. As you can see again, these are isolated activities on the left-hand side. This is where uh, there might be some champions doing some things here or there for the institution, but nothing is sustained and nothing is continuous and nothing and the different areas are not working together. So what they strive for is what's on the right hand side here where it's all integrated and you need organizational resources, leadership, and institutional commitment to reach this, this level of integrated internationalization. And here you can see there's Institutional Global Education Advisory Committee. So you have a committee, you form a committee and it can be from experts, inside outside the institution but it's a group it's not one person but it's a group that will be leading and um, working towards the integration of all of these activities and all of these are integrated and, and working together no matter which direction you go and that's what it's important to strive for an ideal to aspire to and this is what they call the innovative phase in comprehensive internationalization of an institution so the first point is where pervasive and omnipresent global perspectives touch every student, every staff member, and every faculty member. It's where internationalization is integrated into college policies, no matter what they are, whether it's financial, human resources, curriculum development, risk management, and advising. And it's where specific institutional learning outcomes articulate the expectations of global content that the college employees will provide through curricular and co-curricular delivery. It's where technology supports and integrates internationalization. It's the, the development of language skills. And in the chapter, they refer to English because they're focusing mainly on U.S. community colleges and where international students and immigrants or refugees might be learning English. But this works around the world and it really is focusing on language acquisition and language skills. And the more the better. <laughs> and, and finally, having activities and opportunities in international development. Have those constant activities is at the innovative phase. And we add here that the inst internationalization must have a self-sustainable budget. And as you're working towards these integrated elements at your institution, you will, in the end, have a self-sustainable budget. And that's very important to keep things moving forward at your institution. Some key elements for internationalization success. You must have support from the board, from the institutional leadership, and the community. It's very important. It's very difficult to move forward without this support. You must work in a comprehensive, strategic, and systematic manner. You must raise awareness about the importance of comprehensive internationalization among the public, social, and private sectors and get them involved. And there needs to be professionalization in internationalization and interculturality in every sector of the institution. Again, you need to create these high levels of international and intercultural competencies with your leaders, your administrators, your faculty, and your staff. And when we talk about institution and community relations, when we talk about internationalization, and when we talk about interculturality, everyone is responsible. And that's key. And I know we seem to repeat that a lot, but it's very important. And so it needs to really sink in. And it's also one of the reasons when you're raising awareness, you need to repeat that. It's everybody. It's not one person. It's not a small group. It's everybody is responsible to move the institution forward. 
There are some challenges for comprehensive internationalization in today's day and age, especially at the institutional and educational system levels. Raising awareness can be challenging when many institutions believe if they have a little bit of mobility with their students that they are internationalized. So it's important to raise awareness that being internationalized is not just for a, a small group that is going to study abroad. It's how do we create globally competent students for 100% of the students, whether they have a chance to go abroad or not. And we need to have professionalization, again, across all sectors of the institution, at all levels of the institution. Sometimes employee turnover is a challenge. For example, in some countries, for political reasons, a leader may be removed from office and may take his or her administrative staff with him and administrators. And so all the work that that institution has been doing toward comprehensive internationalization may be lost. It may not be. The new leader may want to continue with those activities, but essentially, often they need to start from the beginning again with the new leadership. And lobbying and funding can be an issue. And it's making sure that at the state and federal level, they understand the importance of this for higher education institutions and that they are willing to put money towards those initiatives. And so first, of course, it's raising awareness and working with them to come up with with some budgets as well. And that can be a challenge, as I'm sure you know. <laughs> and also institutional collaboration can be a challenge. And it's getting institutions to work together to move forward as a group and not competing. And it's, it's really getting that collaboration to move the local community forward, to move the state level and the nation forward in, with these initiatives. Also, it's extremely important, the final thing we'd like to mention is that it's extremely important to have teaching methods that empower students and align and support comprehensive internationalization. And we would like to invite you to visit our webpage, usmixfusion.org, to review STEMP. And that stands for Students Empowered, and it's a teaching method that we created that we believe does support comprehensive internationalization, and it creates autonomous students who are responsible, work in teams, and are confident. And so we invite you to check that out when you have some time. And finally, some quotes for reflection. The first one is from Richard Gerber, and he asks, how much of what we do as professionals responsible for educating do we do because it makes us stay within our comfort zone? And how much of what we do do we do because it's the right thing to do for our students? Oftentimes, we like to stay within our comfort zone. Change is not comfortable sometimes. And so it's really important to change that and to step out of the comfort zone. The second quote is from Francisco Marmalejo from the World Bank. And he states, it is necessary to stop practicing the art of ambiguity, to assume that things have to change, but then to continue doing things the same way. So it's the same idea. It's acknowledging that things have to change, but then doing things the same way and not actually changing. So we need to really acknowledge the change has to happen and work towards that change, even if that means stepping outside of our comfort zone. So now we'd like to invite you to send us your questions, your comments, and you can contact us through the discussion tool at the bottom of this webpage. And please send us your pictures and experiences in taking this online workshop at info at usmexfusion.org. At this point, we typically take a group picture and a break for about 20 minutes and then move on to the rest of the workshop. So please take your picture and send us a copy, please. And we thank you for your attention. Have a great day.